Question number eight says four objects are held in position at the corners of a rectangle by light rods as shown in the figure below. The masses value the mass values are given in the table. A find the moment of inertia of the system about the x axis. B find the moment of inertia of the system about the y axis and C find the moment of inertia of the system about an axis going through O and perpendicular to the page. In other words, C is find the moment of inertia about the Z axis. So this is what it's saying. Imagine, if you would, that everything on here is rotating around the X axis. So it's going all the way around the X axis like that. It's rotating in that way. So that's what it means by about the X axis. So we have to measure the radius from the axis of rotation. So we have to measure the radius from here to here and from here to here. And I know my drawing isn't to scale, but there's supposed to be even distance on this side and this side. And so you would take the radius. The radius is the same for this one, this one, this one, this one. So we can simplify this uh, because it would be the radius 1 times mass 1. Uh, plus radius 2 times mass 2. But all of the radiuses are the same. So we can factor out the radiuses here. We can say radius times mass 1 plus mass 2 plus mass 3 plus mass 4 will give us. And, and actually, it's, it's the radius squared. Um, the, so the, the moment of inertia, which is represented by I, the moment of inertia equals the mass times the radius squared. And the fact that this radius is squared is going to give us an interesting uh, result whenever we calculate C. Now, it shows that our diameter is 6 meters, so our radius is going to be half of that. Our radius R will equal 3 meters, and so uh, R squared will equal 9. So we're going to say that r squared, in this case for the x, uh, about the x-axis, rotating around the x-axis, equals 9. And then we're going to say that the mass, we've got to sum up the masses. So it gives us, in this chart right here, what the masses are. So we, had, we would add 2.7 plus 1.7 plus 3.5 plus 1.5. And so the sum of the masses, the sum of the masses is going to equal 84.6. And so the, iner the moment of inertia for the sis for this system is, I actually gave you the answer already. The sum of the masses, I'll try this again. The sum of the masses is 9.4. I have it all written down on my paper here because I just finished working it. So the sum of the masses is 9.4. So the, the moment of inertia of the system is going to be 84.6 around the x-axis, or we could say about the x-axis. And similarly, this number is not going to change because the masses don't change. Whenever we go about the y-axis, okay, so the, the um, radius, the diameter of the y-axis is 4 meters, so the radius of the y-axis is going to equal 2 meters. And so, so um, our of y, or about the y-axis squared, is going to equal 2 squared. It's going to equal 4. And so we can take 9.4 and multiply it by 4 to get the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So we, this is the x-axis. The moment of inertia about the y-axis is going to equal 37.6. And then, lastly, it wants the moment of inertia if this thing was spinning around the z-axis. So if it was spinning around this way, as if there was a rod sticking right through there coming out towards you, and the whole thing was spinning around that thing, what would be the moment of inertia about the z-axis? And so the interesting thing here is that we can just add these two together and get that number. And I'm going to explain why. So you add them together, and it's 122. I, I don't know why I put an I there. It's 122.2. And these, uh, by the way, these units are in kilograms times meters squared. And so we don't have to uh, figure out the radius of any of these, although we could. But the reason why this works is because when we go about the x-axis, we're measuring the radius this way. 
and we go about the y-axis, we're measuring it this way, and we're not just measuring the radius, we're getting the radius squared. So the radius squared. And so if we called this one A, and we called this one B, and we called this distance from the, the z-axis C, and we have to find not just the radius, but the radius squared of all these. Well, this plus this equals this. By, by the rules of the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared, or, or the, um, the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the, squ uh, the square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the square of its two sides. So in this case, we're talking about mass number two, so I'll just go ahead and, and, and we'll work through mass number two. So mass number two is 1.7 kilograms. So we have a 1.7 kilogram mass at point two, and we have a distance upward of four meters. So we have this, we could times this by four squared, and then we have this distance over of of two meters, so to find the y value, we would we would do 1.7 times two squared, or if we wanted to do the z value, well we don't know the radius of z, so we would say z, uh, or c. I'm sorry, I, I was saying z. S the the radius of c, we would say that that four uh, squared, four or actually two. Here we go. This is two. And so I actually need to change this because this is supposed to be three. Um, so going back here, this is three meters. This is two meters. So if this would be three squared plus two squared, uh, so three squared plus two squared, nine plus four, that's thirteen. So the distance from here to here is the square root of thirteen. Well, I have to already square that value. So I, I would have to say that the square of the square root of 13, in other words, the square root of 13 squared equals 13. So it equals the sum of a squared plus b squared. So I could say for the z-axis, I could say 1.7 kilograms times 13. And now we could figure all of these out on their own, on their own line. So I'll plug them into my calculator. So you can see that that the the x uh, the about the x-axis we had a a, an, a a moment of inertia of 15.3 kilograms times meters squared, and about the y-axis we had uh, 6.8 kilograms times meters squared, and about the z-axis we had 22.1 kilograms times meters squared. Now the thing is, if you add, so the 3 plus the 8, that makes 11. So you can see that we got the, the 1. We carry our 1 up. Or I don't know why I carried a 2. We'll carry a 1 up. And so we got 6 plus 6 equals 12. And we carry our 1 up. And then, and then we get 1 plus 1 is 2. So you can see that the sum of the x and y axis equals the z axis because of the Pythagorean theorem. And so we just did this on, on the mass 2. We could do this on mass 1. We could do it on mass 3 and on mass 4. And when we added all of these up for the z-axis, we would find out that uh, what we got for the y-axis plus the x-axis uh, added together would be the same thing when we added them all up.